Now that we've seen how the exchange value of the dollar is affected by shifts in the demand and supply of dollars in the foreign exchange market, let's ask ourselves why we care. What is the effect of changes in the exchange value of the dollar on monetary and fiscal policy? Be specific. Are fiscal and monetary policy helped or hurt by their tendency to change the exchange value of the dollar? And the short answer is that fiscal policy is hurt and monetary policy is helped. So let's see why. Let's take first fiscal policy. Fiscal policy and monetary policy are both demand management policies, or they can be. <coughs> so let's assume we're looking at them that way. Fiscal policy tries to shift the aggregate demand curve. Expansionary fiscal policy uses tax cuts, increases in government spending, to increase aggregate demand. That's why we call it expansionary, because it's trying to increase aggregate demand. And in the simple C plus I plus G world of a closed economy without trade, it will do so, because the tax cut will increase disposable income, increase consumption, G rises, C rises, and we get an increase in aggregate demand. However, what's the international effect of expansionary fiscal policy? The international effect, all other things being equal, an expansionary fiscal policy increases the size of the budget deficit increases the need for government borrowing and therefore increases the demand for loanable funds. Well, if it increases the demand for loanable funds, then it's going to raise the interest rate. And if it raises the interest rate, an increase in the interest rate will increase the demand for dollars in the foreign exchange market. That's the first important link to see. Well, I guess that's, this is also an important link. First, expansionary fiscal policy by increasing the deficit will increase the demand for loanable funds. The higher interest rate produced by the higher demand for loanable funds will drive up demand for the dollars. Why? Because foreigners are more interested in owning bonds, savings accounts, other American financial assets. Well, let's take this a step further. The increase in demand for dollars, all other things being equal, will drive up the exchange value of the dollar. And an increased exchange value of the dollar will do two things. It will make it more difficult for Americans to export because if a dollar costs more euros or costs more yen, then American goods and services are more expensive for Europeans or for Japanese consumers to buy. At the same time, however, 
the increased exchange value of the dollar, the strong dollar, the stronger dollar will also stimulate imports to the U.S. because, all other things being equal, a stronger dollar makes foreign goods and services less expensive in dollar terms to American consumers. So what's the net effect? The net effect is to reduce net exports, which is a negative influence on aggregate demand. Now, what was the aim of our expansionary fiscal policy? The aim of our expansionary fiscal policy was to raise aggregate demand, but the international effect through a stronger dollar is to reduce that expansion of aggregate demand. So this is a little bit like crowding out. You can think of this as an international form of crowding out. It doesn't mean that aggregate demand won't rise. It just means that it'll rise by less. It has been weakened by the international effect acting through interest rates first the market for loanable funds then the interest rate then the exchange value of the dollar then net exports and we can see that it's just as true for contractionary monetary excuse me fiscal policy contractionary fiscal policy we can do this a little faster so we get this erased, but I can talk you through it first. Contractionary fiscal policy means what? It means a reduction in the demand for loanable funds in the U.S. because contractionary fiscal policy, raising taxes, cutting government spending, will, all other things being equal, reduce the size of the American budget deficit. By reducing the size of the budget deficit, it reduces the demand for loanable funds. By reducing the demand for loanable funds, it reduces interest rates. And that will cause the exchange value of the dollar to fall. So let's see that. Contractionary fiscal policy. Raise taxes, cut government spending. The tax increase lowers disposable income, lowers consumption. So by lowering G and lowering consumption, we're trying to lower aggregate demand. And that's what contractionary fiscal policy means. We're trying, we're using the budget to lower aggregate demand. But what's the international effect? By lowering the deficit, we lower the demand for loanable funds, which will lower interest rates in the U.S., all other things being equal. That will lower foreign demand for dollars. People in other countries will be less interested in holding U.S. assets. That will push down the exchange value of the dollar. Pushing down the exchange value of the dollar will be helpful for U.S. exports. A cheaper dollar makes it easier for American exporters to sell overseas. And a weaker dollar will reduce imports to the United States because foreign goods and services are more expensive. Americans won't buy as much French wine. They won't take as many trips to New Zealand strange place to go anyway. The net effect is to increase net exports, which is a positive influence on aggregate demand. Once again, this weakens the effect of contractionary fiscal policy. Contractionary fiscal policy was trying to decrease aggregate demand, but thanks to the effect on loanable funds and the interest rate, we end up with a weaker dollar, a weaker dollar 
stimulates aggregate demand. No reason to assume that it's enough to completely cancel the domestic effect on G and C, but at least we know that contractionary fiscal policy will be weakened. It will be less powerful in an open economy that trades than a closed economy that doesn't trade. Or put another way around, uh, the more the economy trades, the larger NX is, if the ratio of net exports to total output is quite high for a country like Canada or the Netherlands, then this international effect could be powerful enough to overwhelm the primary effect. Maybe you could drive the exchange value of your currency so low that your attempt at a contractionary fiscal policy actually ends up being expansionary. It's logically possible. In the United States, the ratio of net exports to Q is sufficiently small that that won't happen. But still, the effect will not be helpful. The international effect weakens fiscal policy.